Greetings, fellow traders, high in the space. This is your host, Team Mario Shadow, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back once again to some more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're going to continue what we last left off in the last live stream. We had finished up talking to the forensic scientist in episode four. Now we're going to be continuing to finish up the investigation for this episode, and then we'll start with the trial for today. So, without further ado, let's with today's adventure and see what's in store for us. Allons y Alright, now the last thing we needed to do, we needed to come here. Second November, room on Fresno Street. The police are still busily investigating in here, then. But Gina's nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been bliss blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I expect she'll be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually... There's something different about this room since the last time we were here, isn't there? We could always use the time to investigate more thoroughly. Alright then, in that case, may as well examine this trunk. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh, it appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. I wonder to whom it belongs. There are some initials on the outside. Look. TG. Let's ask um, one of the policemen if they know how it came to be here. Boy, what do you think you're doing? That's my trunk, that is. Hands off. Gina! Wh where were you hiding? I don't know. You leave something unattended for a few seconds and every Tom, Dick, and Aries got its greedy eyes on it. Um, just a wild guess, Gina, but... What? Spit it out, Otto. Is it fair to say that you've only owned that trunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Come on, this truck goes with me everywhere. Always has. Where have you been the last year? Trying not to incur your wrath, mainly. Okay. Whew, oh dear. You should hear them talking at the yard now. They should be ashamed of themselves. They're saying that it was the boss who killed all them bludgers. Ah, you mean the whole reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently, the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. Stuff to do with all them criminals what got off scot-free. Yes, the ones prosecuted by Lord Van Zeeks who used bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well then, obviously, it was that bloomin' reaper giving the orders, weren't it? But why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook hidden in his office. Oh no, this doesn't sound good. It had details about all the crimes that have been pegged as the Reaper's work. What? No! Did you see it, Gina? Did you see that notebook? They wouldn't flame and let me, because I'm just an apprentice, apparently. But it was me who found it, and he was my boss. That's right. I was pretty miffed about it, so I sneaked a peek at what it said anyway. Oh, that's our Gina. So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? The way I see it, it's my right to read what he wrote. And what had he written, Gina? Dates, times, places, names. An old list, long, a long list of them. All details about the bludger supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But, there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps it was a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. Exactly! That's what I said. That's the first thing you think, right? That as it happens, it was full of names I recognized anyway. Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean. I'm pretty sure the date against it was the 31st of October. Oh! 
the day before the inspector was found dead. So, what was the odd name? It weren't like a name I've ever seen before. It was something like, um, nah, it's no good. I can't remember it. I don't think it was an English name, put it that way. Oh dear, what a pity. There was something else too. I don't know if it matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. Shin, it was. Don't suppose it means anything, but... Did you say Shin? Eh? What? It does mean something? Lord Van Zeeks knew the name, too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. And now we find out her name appeared in Gregson's secret notebook. We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, dear? Well, of course not. I've been busy, ain't I? Investigating in that. The lads at the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. The day before? That would be the undercover investigation into the Red-Headed League, then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? You found some code what was pretending to be him, didn't you, Otto? Yes, it was Mr. Vigil who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing as Gregson. Well, anyway, you ain't the only one turning stuff up. I've got me own ways of getting results. <gasps> Doggy! When me and my partner here get together, there's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby! He's such a faithful friend. So, have you tracked anything down, then? What do you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you, though. Police business, in it. Ugh. Anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need any help, you know who to turn to, right? Me and the Hellhound here. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish, honest. <laughs> um, Gina, about your Hellhound there. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the pride of the force, he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different, and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. But here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment, it seems, for a canine at least. It should be. After all, in the great exhibition case the other day, it was Toby here who managed to locate the rubber's workshop. Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what this super dog can do, eh? Do we have something the Chief Inspector could catch the scent of, I wonder? Um... Perhaps this? Well, Chief Inspector Toby, if you wouldn't mind having a s sniff of this. Togo powers! Activate! He might be a little too keen, don't you think? Ah! The Chief Inspector made short work of Gina there. Ah! Look what he's gone to! Oh my, that trunk clearly still has a very strong scent. Of Inspector Gregson! In other words, it must have belonged to him. Oh, alright. It's a fair cop, I suppose. And you nearly got away with it, too. You always talk so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what it can achieve. Did it not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? Yeah, that was a bit of a bloomer, weren't it? That's enough now, then, Gina. Eh? I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. It it weren't like that. It it just weren't. What are you talking about? I know what's going through that head of yours, but that ain't what happened. All right then. What did happen? Well, like I said before, we were trying to trace the boss's movements. So I let Toby here have a whiff of the boss's overcoat, and as soon as I'd done that, he went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. To a sandwich? Not to a bag of chips? Mr. Naruhoto, I believe Gina means the witness. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. Yeah, he had it hidden between them wooden boards of his. The boss's trunk. 
You mean when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all piled in here? Exactly. He nabbed it from the scene. Goodness. Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling, and you know what he said? I, I thought it might fetch a good, good price, and the chap wouldn't be needing it anymore, so... B -b but that's all I did, nothing more, and then I took less. Would you Adam and Eve the cheek of it in? Stealing the dead boss's stuff to flog! So Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime, then. How could they? So anyway, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent chunk, so I figured I might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that, eh? Well, maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find the answer to that question together. I think perhaps that trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you on about? I am the police! Gina, if you wouldn't mind, could we maybe examine it? Yeah, alright then. Do what you want with it. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our examination of the evidence. Gregson's trunk has been entered in a court record. Doggo? What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting so aggressively towards me all of a sudden? Mr. Naruto, be careful, it must be the trunk! <laughs> Toby, oi! What are you doing? You're gonna lick his face off! Mr. Naruto! Mr. Naruto! Gina, quickly, hail a carriage! Second November, 4.57 p.m., Naruto's legal consultancy. What? So, we got attacked by a dog? Oh, Mr. Naruto, are you alright? Miss Susito. Ah, conscious again at last. A blessed relief, my dear fellow. After all, to drop dead after a moderate licking by a small terrier. Most unseemly. Ha! <laughs> ah, he got licked to death. What is or is it seemly is irrelevant here, Mr. Sholmes. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Ah, what's this on my head? Uh, a bandage? Sadly, we had no ice, so that's a compre compress of sugar water. Sugar water? Don't worry, Mr. Naruto. It's a first aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So, let us take tea when you're feeling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Ugh, the bump on my head is throbbing sweetly enough, don't worry. <laughs> Whenever you feel ready, then. Let me s let's see here. Oh, no. Court record. There's a rip on the side of it. Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the letter and into the metal behind. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged, whatever made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. I wonder how it happened. Oh, there's blood here. Look at this dark stain here. Do you think? Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Ugh, I knew you were going to say that. So that presumably means that this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. I think Gina's been carrying this around with her. If you didn't know any better, I suppose it does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. May as well look inside. Let's have a look inside. Look, there's something inside. Ooh, let's see. It appears to be a passport, authorizing him to travel overseas. Was Inspector Gregson about to go on a trip abroad then? Perhaps the date of departure might tell us something. That was... Oh! What is it? It was for travel on... 31st, the 31st of October, just one day before the incident. What? Really? A passport document that was in, in Inspector Gregson's possession. It was issued for travel to France the day before his body was discovered. 
Gregson went to France the day before his body was discovered? Oh, hello. What's this? Do you see that? There's something stuck in the side of the trunk there. It's glinting. It looks like a fragment of metal of some sort. But it's wedged in so tightly I can't remove it. Well, don't cut yourself. You'd better leave it, I think. Hmm... Okay. Well, Sholmes is here. November Schomps are sweet. Uh, what? What? I'm, I'm sorry, what is this scene? So Iris is sad, and Sister's father is out like a light. What on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Ah, no. It's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris? Iris? What's the matter? Um, who's that sprawling, I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there? Iris? Um, is she even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling you whilst you're singing so merrily, but would you be kind enough to explain the situation? Well, that works. A crooning gentleman and a mute young girl. A rather tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have incited the gods of deduction with me to find their voices, too. Ah, Mr. Sholmes! Do you mean... The strains of reasoning within me are playing now as a delightful duet. One melody sings of a reunion full of nostalgia. Whilst the other is a morose theme about the great secret you're trying so desperately to conceal, Iris. She's turned as white as a sheet. So as usual, you instantly seem to the very heart of the matter. And by the time my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will reach its finale. So then, to music land, where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray, do enjoy, Herlock Sholmes' latest logic and reasoning spectacular! Let us begin! The Man's Identity Firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings, and his apparent inability to understand when asked to des desist. So why is the man here at all, and in such apparently high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's midly irritating wobbling is revealed by the herbal tea. And you're off. <laughs> you can tell just from her look. <laughs> you obviously offer that German guest a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's delectable flavor has made the man's spirit soar. And resulted in this joyful ditty tumbling incessantly from his lips. He's not moving! I eagerly await sampling the flavor myself, that I may join the fellow in his state of elation. Mm, nope, you're off. 
Now, to the next question. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so th thoroughly of the settee? As it happens, a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particularly delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gostrich Sigismund von Ornstein. No! No! That's a kid! The King of Germany. If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there could be no question. That mask belongs to the King of Germany. God. Sholmes, you're so far off. It, it's literally Sister's father. Even I could tell that, um, tell that from how he's dressed. It would appear that His Majesty remembers the fine service I accorded him, and has decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. A well-mannered monarch, indeed. Wouldn't you agree, my dear fellow? You're off. You're so far off. So the identity of this mask um, visitor is, in fact, my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. And the girl's silence. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. <laughs> but your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is a concealed in that knapsack. A five pound note, I believe, I must say. As your compatriot, I'm deeply saddened. It would appear that you've allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by His Royal Highness, earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the King's secret. You're wrong! And now, the final piece of the puzzle. What is this secret you strive to hide with your silence, Iris? Ah, yes. We need only follow that brief involuntary twitch of your eyes to find the answer. You were touching us gone with that coffee cup. My favorite coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup. It appears that his high-spirited highness broke it in the midst of his hijinks. Mm. Which leads us to the sad truth. My favorite coffee cup has been broken by the King of, I of Germany! And Iris, you tried to conceal it from me! I shall have a bill sent via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. <laughs> no, man! Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this painful puzzle. You're so far off! With your silence as well, the fellow's jovial warbling rather rings in your, the ears, does it not? <sighs> um, Mr. Sholmes, I must say something does rather trouble me. Pray, Miss Sister, do tell! His Royal Highness? Doesn't appear to have moved a muscle since we arrived. Ah! And you haven't said a word either, Iris. If Mr. Sholmes has it all right, you might as well own up to it now. Your reasoning isn't entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Yet another grievance, Mr. Naruhodo. Surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently, the one you were just describing, and according to that at least, it wasn't the King of Germany, it was the King of Bohemia. Goodness, was it? Yes, that's quite true. Master Gotz, the prince, testified to that in court. In his words, I have come to see the Great Exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. 
I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourselves. It could easily become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Narahodo, that it's our turn now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Yes, even Mr. Sholmes is willing to admit he might be slightly wide of the mark this time. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding somewhere. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. But one truth is incontrovertible. My favorite coffee cup is no more. So, shall we embark again on a joint presentation of Herlock Sholmes' Logic and Reasoning Spectacular? Hold it, Mr. Sholmes! I'm not going to read this. So, what? So what? It's some mix of herbs that gives you the urge to sing. Goodness, I should like to try some. And I'd like to hear your singing. But this man, just how long does he intend to keep up with that tune, do you suppose? As I said, he's been stock still the entire time. And if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. Ah! So I'm not sure what's actually responsible for the spirited singing. But I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris' gaze. Yep, there it is. That one was easy. The reason for the man's mid uh, mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Indeed, for no well-bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, it would appear that the fellow is unconscious. Ah. The music seems to have stopped now. I ask you, Mr. Narahodo. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? How should I know? Well, never mind. On with the deduction. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the settee? Alright, alright. Not reading anymore, because this is stuff we've already read. No, it doesn't. That mask belongs to Kazuma Asogi. Although we've already established that it was actually the King of Bohemia, it seems Mr. Sholmes intends to persist with his Germany theory for some reason. Come to think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Master Gotz? The boy whom you had in tears? Don't remind me, or anyone else. Do you suppose all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear masks? I'm sure they do. Well, probably anyway. The point is, that mask doesn't belong to any king. No, that's right, as we well know, because we can identify the true owner of this mask. Yep, it belongs to Kazuma Asugi! Yes, there can be no question, that mask belongs to Kazuma Asugi! In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable, bruh. Only you could try to make that sound positive. Cosmos Mask has been languishing on this metal chest for several days, though that doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. But it is now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. After all, the gentleman is unconscious. We need only excuse ourselves in advance, gently lift the mask and peer beneath it. I 
I don't believe it. Ah! Father! I'm afraid, Mrs. Toe, you must be mistaken. No! I think not, Mr. Sholmes. It would appear our logic and reasoning has once again revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor is my unconscious father, Eugene Mikotoba. Logic and reasoning are just looking insane. Leaves us with one remain. Uh, nope, not reading it. So that's a five pound note poking out from Iris's knapsack, is it? Oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. I know, I'm not even sure if we've seen any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway, Father would never have paid money for Iris' silence. He certainly seems like the silent type himself, though, judging by his present state. There must be some other reason for Iris' silence, I suppose. Perhaps what Iris is trying so hard not to give away with her eyes is something entirely different. Hmm. Uh-huh. She's looking at this chest. Yes, the reason for your mutinous is concealed inside that metal chest. An excellent observation. For upon closer inspection, there is something different about the chest's appearance. It's unlocked. It's kept locked at all, all times, yet now, the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. Hmm, but it's a simple enough matter to incite you to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Here we go. No! Hurley, don't! Bru oh, no! <laughs> Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes! Hurley! Why was there a punching glove in there? He's dead. Never! Oh, Hurley. I told you not to open it. Ah, so you found your voice now, Iris. Ah! In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... This is somewhat different to the usual dance of deduction you perform at Mr. Sholmes, isn't it? Well, he's left me alone on the ballroom floor, so I'm going to have to dance this next part solo. And anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet? Despite that knowing point of the finger before? Miss Susito, sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh, well, if you say so. I think we'd better examine Iris more closely and try to rescue the situation then. Um, um... Oh, hello! Key! That's the key she's holding. Look, I'm sure that wasn't in our hands before, was it? No, you're quite right. It's appeared as if by magic. That's strange. A big old iron key. Where did it materialize from? Jesus! It's the key. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. Ah! Well, Mr. Sholmes was thrown into the air before. Just before you called out to try to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. That something is the key now in your hands. No doubt the key to the chest. You're so... You're so clever, Bruno! So now it becomes clear. 
Thanks to Mr. Sholmes' graphic demonstration, we can well imagine what happened here. But, but... Professor Mikotoba also opened that metal chest only to be punched into the air. And land sprawled on the settee. But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the stylish scarf? And the cup of tea? And above all, why would he be wearing Kazuma-sama's mask? Well, for those curious details, I can think of only one explanation. Clearly an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. Isn't that right, Iris? <laughs> Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Professor Mikotoba opened the chest, completely unaware of what awaited him inside, the mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down, and the teacup's journey through the air ended when it caught on the unconscious professor's finger. You... you mean to say that the stylish scarf... is actually just a tablecloth? This is the great detective's office, after all. A place of miraculous deductions. <laughs> Would you expect anything less? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as... Brilliant, Runo. Thus concludes Ryunosuke Naruto's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. Ha! So then, why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? Hold it! You're still hiding something! Objection! An admirable performance, Mr. Naruhodo. But in the final act of the show there, you rather missed everything of importance. M Mr. Sholmes! If you would cast your mind back to my earlier deduction. Iris, clearly you're hiding a great secret. Ah! She is? And the look on her face. Mr. Sholmes must be right. Whatever that great secret is, the cat isn't out of the bag yet. So I put it to you again. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. Nope! That's not it! It's what's in her knapsack! It really is a shame about Mr. Sholmes' cup. It must have been smashed when Professor Mikotoba opened the chest. Oh dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduction has taken a different direction, Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work here one final time. Surely this time, at last, the knapsack is going to be the answer. I'm really not sure why you're so intent on showing Iris' bag to be complicit in these events. Because it's a sizable bag, big enough to carry things around, Mr. Naruhoto. That's what bags are for. So, the knapsack might never see the limelight, you mean. I really wouldn't like to say. Hmm. Oh, hold, wait, wait! Ah, look! There! There seem to be more papers there! Is Iris trying to hide them underneath the tray? The, the insignia, Mr. Naruhoto! It's an official Scotland Yard document! What? But why would Iris have... We must ask her! An official Scotland Yard document? Take that! You were attempting to have gone with that case file! Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective! Oh no! We visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today, and Dr. Gorey informed us that the autopsy report of Clint Van Zeeks had gone missing. Clint Van Zeeks? Hmm, yes, I do seem to recall. Uh, some years ago, I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? <laughs> I... I... You mean it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are... I'm sorry. Forgive me!
the truth. I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trap chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very nearly the late consulting detective Herlock Sholmes. Uh, I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean this obsolescy report really is? Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it, I knew it was Daddy's. The, the writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? Iris? It must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes, what is it? I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the settee has been somewhat forgotten. Ah! The father! Perhaps we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. Mr. Narahoto! Yes? Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. So will I. No, no. I can manage alone, thank you. You have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris's brew to stew. Because there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a trunk. I wonder. Perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Sholmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. We must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That Daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Yes, and that notes about all the case and they solved together are kept aside that metal chest. That's right. Hurley told me, you see. He said that Daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what Daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. <laughs> Ooh, hiccups, Jesus. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. But, there was one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah! His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he'd made about his work with Curly. But then one day, that's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out. Is that right? Yes. So it was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know that handwriting. I thought to myself, because it was the same as the writing you'd seen on your father's case notes? Exactly. I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked a doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report anyway. And even worse, I was told that was the first and last time we'd be allowed even to look at it there. So you decided to steal it. When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. And the signature of the corner at the bottom of the autopsy report read Dr. John H. Wilson. So that's how I finally found out. I learnt Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Wilson, and that's also when I heard the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided there and then that I'd write The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, Iris, I had no idea the stories are quite such a deep per personal significance for you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. 
and why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. I must apologize, Iris. This is really all my fault. Hurley? I made a promise, you see, and until the time was right, I'd keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gory and apologize, I promise. Yes, we'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. I must go and water my herbs, I think. I'll see you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I know Mr. Sholmes is here for her, but still... How? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes? Oh dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But that... that would mean... What on earth's the matter, Miss Susato? You've turned as white as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Narhoto. The one from ten years ago. The writing. Isn't Dr. Wilson's at all. Huh? What do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because I know this writing very well. This writing. It's my father's. What? What? Professor Mikotobas? Indeed, it's true. And now you know. My dear fellows. No, I don't know anything. What on earth does all of this mean, Mr. Sholmes? Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind it's just too extraordinary to believe. I get it. Mikotoba was um, Holmes's Holmes um, partner. Please, you have to explain. Let me take a look see at this autopsy report before we do. Coroner John H. Wilson. Victim name: Clint Van Zeeks, male, age 33, nationality British. Time of death: for May 31st, between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observation of death from a single stab wound to the heart. Other superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Magician notes, recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and red ring fingers of the right hand, but no document and corresponding ink was found. Vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Credit to Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. So if it's... So if it's... Um... Her father's handwriting, that means that John H. Wilson wasn't the one that writ all those case notes. It was Mikotoba. So, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotoba then. But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Not possible? My dear fellow, Craig, take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it actually makes a great deal of sense. It. it does? Ten years ago is when Father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Mikotoba engaged? Ah, of course! He was an assistant in Dr. Wilson's laboratory, learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be his signature at the end. I see. So Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean. She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. John H. Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. The details of Clint's autopsy report have been updated in the court record. Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Sholmes, comes from the published stories of your exploits. <laughs> yes, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, written by Iris. And we really have no way of knowing 
What's fact? And what's fiction? Both traveling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about this supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade, and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, where is your partner now? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. But if this autopsy report and the records of all your old cases man, and if the autopsy report was written, though not signed, by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. Pray, impress me. Your partner would have to be Eugene Mikotoba. In other words, Miss Susito's father. Upon my word, Mr. No Naruto. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasp the art of deduction. You, you mean to say? Allow me to introduce you. To my great friend and partner, Mikotoba. P Professor Mikotoba! Does, does this mean that you're the real Dr. Wilson? No, 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 my dear. I'm still my old self, Eugene Mikotoba, your father. Oh, of, of course. This is obviously too much for Susato-san to take in. I must say, though, how my old friend has attained worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, pray remind me. When was it again, Mikotoba? Sixteen years ago, Sholmes. Ah, yes, quite. Sixteen years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Seishiro and Kenshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital. Some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. The rents are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right. So I decided I need someone to share lodgings at the expense, and was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a callow fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for little gain. And the situation of our cohabitation led, up, led to us pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe. It was a mere six years. We had a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather familiar yourselves. The Professor Killings. After the trial, Seishiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising, given the circumstances. So there you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusty chronicler remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing! Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Sholmes' famous partner! Father. Goodness, my dear, what a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you were the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And, and that is... You know very well what it is. The unresolved matter of Iris's father! Ah, uh, of course! I'd almost forgotten about that one! I should have seen this coming, I suppose. Iris told us that all the notes about the Great Detective's adventures that are in that metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Sholmes' partner, father, and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris' father... Must be you! Ah! Upon my word, Miss Susito. 
you're coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. What? What you've always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago, and you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour of Britain. I've always accepted that. But, all this about Iris. Ooh, there it is. Susan Osad's ice cold stare. No, now hold on a minute. It, it was very complicated. I mean, it, it's really not what you think. Then perhaps you'd like to explain exactly what it is. There it is. Now the eyes go from ice cold to red hot just before she... No, really. You, you've got the wrong end of the stick. Show him. Say something, man. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. M Mr. Sholmes, when did he get all dressed up? Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past, Nikotobo and I have an urgent matter that requires a short excursion. But it's very late, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So, get your to coat, Nikotoba. The game is afoot. But, but Sholmes... I really must give Susato a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellow, later. Our carriage awaits downstairs already. You haven't changed one iota, have you? I mean, really. I visited our home after ten long years, and when I opened that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. And as if that wasn't enough, when I eventually regained consciousness, I plunged straight into all of this! <laughs> Father, please. Go with Mr. Sholmes now. What? I've no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interest. I trust you. Completely. Suzuto. And sending the great detective and his great partner off on renewed adventures together is more than I could have hoped for in my wildest dreams. Very well then. We'll speak again later. So... I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Naruhodo. Good luck in battle. And in reaching a decision. A decision? About whether to go back to Japan, I suppose. So much happened that day that I barely knew what to do with myself. It would only be later that I'd come to realize how amidst the chaos I'd unleashed, were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth, and that all the turmoil was necessary. Hello, Shining. Welcome to the um. Welcome to the channel. And that to give me the resolve to see everything through. Uh, is it after Phoenix Wright or before him? Uh, this is before him. This is dealing with his ancestor, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Oh! Wait! I was expecting another part of the trial. But we're on the final chapter. Hold up! One thing I want to do before I end up co uh, continuing. Yep, apparently, um, um, apparently that is the case. His great, 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 whatever, great grandfather was a lawyer too. I want to use this alternative outfit just because of um, because of the situation that we're in now.
Oh, no, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Final chapter. Resolve of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. No, I don't think the girl has any relation to Mia and Maya, unfortunately. I think she's just um, someone that we um, we know in this time. 3rd of November, 9.14am, um, um, the Old Bailey Defendant's Antichamber. So, the time's finally come. Today, we unravel everything. Ooh, I like the outfit. I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Mrs. Poe. Um, Mrs. Sito? Ah! What? Why? Why is this no toss? Oh no! What, what's the matter, Mr. Naruhodo? Um, nothing? I was just saying that I'll be relying on your support today, but... I'm so sorry, of course. I, I know I can be rather incompetent at times, but... I shan't let you down. Would you mind helping me to my feet, then? Oh dear, I'm really very sorry. Sisto-san isn't her usual self at all. Well, that's hardly surprising, I suppose. She's just found out that her father is the partner of a world-famous detective. Not to mention. So technically, only Ryunosuke is relative of original characters. Uh, hang on, I can't... I'm missing some um, dialogue here. Uh, yeah. Ryunosuke is the only um, um, character that's related to somebody in in the original timeline. I think there might be someone else that might be related to um, um, other characters, but I'm not too sure. Not to mention. Ah, good, good morning, sir. Lord Van Zeeks. Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. What, did I hear that correctly? What? Oh, um, no, nothing, just. I hope we could clear things up today. I really can't make this man out. His face says, I hate you, but his words are almost jovial today. In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, Mr. Naruto. Good point. The Reaper. I suppose in hindsight, I shouldn't have allowed that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tacit acceptance of that pseudonym. My failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than a mere legend that led to all this. But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zeeks. It's only because of serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank, I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. That having been slain by that evil killer, Clint's restless spirit returned as some sort of demigod to wield a deadly blade of justice, where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we've heard that story too. When I lost him, I felt as though I'd lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel his absence a little less keenly. Even if I knew it was just an illusion, just some nonsense conjured up by an over-imaginative native public. He was obviously extremely important to you. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that matters. I know that you didn't take anyone's life. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this, but I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all the lies and deception. I can't deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Thank you. Now tell me, why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Oh, hi, 
Hey, Iris. Oh, Iris, when did you get here? Oh. Ah, uh, um. I brought you one of my special blends. Hurley loves it. He says it helps him to clear his head. I thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's surely the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. You seem different today, Iris. Oh. Sort of subdued, I suppose. Oh, shit. I am not. What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on our mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. C's laboratory. All right, then. Good luck to you both. I have to make a move now. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you'd want to watch today's proceedings. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Get ready? For what? Oh, yes. Would you take this? Isn't that one of the little felt dolls that's usually dangling from your knapsack? Yes, it's a lucky charm. A little Hurley that I made once. A Hurley? It looks more like a Hairley to me. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. What? Pull his ears? That's right. He's a way to bring good luck. I think he might need it. Y you think what we'll need is luck? I just sneaked a peek inside the courtroom. And it seemed very different to normal. Yes, it would seem that a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? What about Mr. Sholmes, Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and he hadn't come home by the time I left this morning. Oh, I see. Was Professor Mikotoba? Zeke's looks like drunk version of Edgeworth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe. Maybe. I'm kind of doubtful on that one, though. Was Professor Mikotoba out all night, too, do you think, Miss Uzo? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. And apparently they didn't come back to their rooms last night at all. Except Edgeworth doesn't throw bottles during the trial. Very true! Hey, Father and Judge Jigoku, I mean. Judge Jigoku, too? That's right. Nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. Counsel for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. Please make your way inside the courtroom at once. Good luck then, Reno. Good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper. I hope it goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. We must go inside now, Lord Van Zeeks. Hmm. Lord Van Zeeks has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had to lock horns with in court. But not today. Today I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Kazuma Asogi, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. Yep, he's the only one. Well, no. You you got um, Prosecutor Godot, who drinks a lot of coffee. Now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what Destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day, to this one trial, to this one final reckoning. November 3rd, 9.30 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. It feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. There are cold stairs piercing me like knives from all sides today. Ah! M Mr. Naruto! In 2040, a new ace attorney, we will get new prosecutors who will do cracks during the trial. No! Look! Wait! What are you doing here, Lord Strongheart?!
Kazuma must have known beforehand. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, events have come to light that threaten to rock the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of a condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of the man, and the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak. Britain is currently hosting influential members of the judiciary from countries all around the world. It is imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. And one over which I, male Strongheart, exercise total and unequivocal authority. But the six jurors flames just... As was the case at yesterday's proceedings, those here present in the public gallery are distinguished members of a judiciary, assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial process. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. On a personal note, I find this most distressing, Lord Van Seeks. You are a prosecutor of exceptional talent. Much like your brother Clint, in fact. Okay! In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. For the trial of Barack von Zeeks, who officially stands accused of murder. WHAT IS THIS MUSIC?! Ah! Counsels for the prosecution and defense, are you in full readiness to proceed? The defense is ready, my lord! As is the prosecution. Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a sign to the victim, Inspector Tobias Gregson, that was unknown to his superiors at Scotland Yard. Yes, he was carrying out operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. And in those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice. Mr. Daly Vigil, who would be given the inspector's identification, to present himself around the capital in order to establish credible alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work, when in fact he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear he buried his memories at the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation. Because whilst he was engaged as chief warder at Barclay Prison, he abetted the convict's escape. Mr. Vigil is currently recuperating at St. Sinner. He's recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. He's formally admitted to posing as Gregson whilst investigating the red-headed league. Which brings us to the crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed a suggestion that the victim may have been killed one day earlier. Uh, no, I doubt it. I doubt he'll, um, be doing that. This was based largely on the discovery that the victim's pocket watch had not been wound. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, Prosecutor Osogi. I met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. It's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on the o October 31st, the day before his body was discovered. I have here an au updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday that the time of death was 5 p.m. on the November 1st. There are indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. That's out of the question. There are no refrigeration devices in that part of London large enough to accommodate a human corpse. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, it will give renewed significance to the movements of the victim on the day before the Fresno Street in this incident. It would, yes. Especially since on that day, Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Vigil to cover up his real movements. 
it's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Do I sense that the prosecution has some information regarding those activities? Scott Lanyard put in an enormous effort into investigating that precise matter yesterday. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now. State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade, reporting. Representative of, representative of Scotland Yard. A self-conferred rank, but never mind. Gina? Again? What's your problem, Moto? What's with that look, that Gina again look, eh? Ah. The boss meant the world to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Oh? Inspector Gregson, you mean? He got me out of the back slums of the East End and took me under his wing. Taught me that life can have a purpose. So that's why I'm the best person to be standing here speaking for him. Oh, Gina. Right. All out of the goodness of Gregson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Sholmes. No. What's relevant to these proceedings is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation yesterday has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. Lord Strongheart knew! So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir! The victim's movements. All yard detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealings that day. Looks like it was a big job and all. Yeah, he got murdered. Looks like it was a big job and all. But the coppers... Can't see. Weren't onto it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses what say the Reaper at the place saw the Reaper at the place, too. Smuggled goods? I don't know, do I? I'm just telling you what was written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines, goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they're disposed of at regular black markets that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. So Inspector Gregson was investigating one of those black markets. It has been suggested that high-ranking government officials may be involved in black market activity. No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid details of his investigations being leaked to the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority, without the Yard's knowledge. And do we know where the dealings were taking place this time? In a particular room of a certain exclusive London gentleman's club, and on the day in question. The accused is known to have been there. That's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigation. <laughs> Into the matter. That can't be! We haven't heard anything about any of this! Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question. The accused, Barack von Zeeks, was present. That would be very significant testimony, then. Oh my, but... but... Lord Van Zeeks has made no mention of this! At all! In short, Lord Van Zeeks had ample opportunity to murder the victim. Very well then, Counsel... And then, Counsel for the Defense, begin your cross-examination. Okay! Now, what stood out about this, um, this testimony? Well, obviously, if I had to choose one, it would be statement number three. Because we don't know anything about these smuggled goods. Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yep. It was all there in the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Um, as I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at a gentleman's club. Yes, I remember, but I was hoping to find out the name of the club. That won't be necessary. What? It's conceivable that the club might be used again by the smugglers in the future. 
Therefore, the prosecution has been asked not to reveal the name in these proceedings. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's right here. All I've got to do is read it out. And I could, too. I got this reading game buttoned up now. Can't I show you what I got and what I can do? Go on, what's the arm? Yeah, Gina can um, read now. The judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. I could try to find out. What should I do? Insist. This is a closed court. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. As I explained, there is some possibility of politicians being involved in this affair. The prosecution is rightfully exercising caution, I imagine. No, my lord. The prosecution has no objection. Kazuma? There's no question that Inspector Gregson was looking into these black market dealings. However, it's not yet been established that he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defense requires to know the club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstruction. Right then, I get to show off me reading skills. Apparently, the smuggled goods was going to happen at a gentleman's called, club called the Grouse. The Grouse. Hmm. Do we have anything, um, anything to work off of that? Letter of it. Let me see here. Hello, what's this? Oh, looks like this is some sort of steamship's ticket. The SS Grouse, first class cabin 001. Yokohama departure, September 11th. London arrival, November 1st. Ah, that's the boat that Professor Mikotoba and Judge Shigoku came on from Japan, isn't it? Can you technically... Uh, yes, but considering this is the final chapter, maybe it would be less risky to um, um, to actually press on everything because you never know what could um, cause, um, cause me to fail. Yes, I think it called at Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. I think it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dover on the SS Buria. It seems a shame not to keep your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I have mine safely in my diary, and I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh, well how strange. Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Mr. Narahodo? Did I imagine it, or was that com comment accompanied by a little sigh? Objection! I've read about these clubs that exist here in Britain. As I understand it, there are places where well-to-do gentlemen socialize with friends and colleagues. Don't imagine for a second that a foreign student like you would be admitted. Seriously, is your mirror cracked or something? Do we know for sure that the contraband dealings were definitely happening at a club called the Grouse? The police are currently looking for evidence, but haven't found anything definitive yet. And I'm sorry to say, that they probably won't. What do you mean by that? I mean that the place suspected Gregson was secretly going to visit on the 31st of October may not have been a gentleman's club at all. You're showing a very irreverent attitude towards our country's police force there, Council. Hang on a minute. I need to back, um, back out for a second. Because that's just going to bug me right there. The fact that animations happen for um, for the characters, despite the fact that they don't show it on their actual uh, um, um, person. That's going to bother me. If it wasn't, for a it wasn't a gentleman's club, then what was it? A steamship. You think it's a ship? I have the evidence to prove it. 
Beer. Let me see that. This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Uh, um, the other side, my lord. Be more specific next time. Ah, this would appear to be a ticket for passage upon a steamship, yes. The SS Grouse. Objection! So there's a steamship named the Grouse that happens to share a name with the club. But I'm afraid to say, there's a flaw in your logic there. How? Look at the ticket. Notice the date of arrival in port. The ship arrived at the port of Dover on the 1st of November. Ah! The day on which the sound like a gunshot was heard on Fresno Street. In other words, on the day in question here, October 31st, when the victim was on his clandestine mission, the ship hadn't yet docked on British shores. That will certainly make an undercover investigation somewhat challenging. The fact that the steamship hadn't yet reached Britain substantiates the defense's assertion that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the day in question. They show your evidence for that assertion. Very well. In that case, counsel for the defense, Present your evidence to the court now. Evidence that sub substantiates your claim that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the October 31st. Take that! What's this? A passport for travel issued to the victim. Dated 31st of October. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered, there is a distinct possibility he wasn't even in the country. Order! Order! This document for, is for passage to France. It does appear to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS Grouse arrived at Dover, it docked at the northern coast of France for a night. According to my father, who was on board at the port of Dunkirk. Dunkirk, France. What could possibly have taken the victim there? Um... I'm impressed, Ryanosuke Narahodo. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You mean, you knew about this? The prosecution strategy for this trial has been laid down by the Crown Prosecution Office. On the day before the incident, the victim was investigating contraband dealings at a London club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation and the line the prosecution has been asked to follow. But personally, I don't agree. I think the prosecutor's office is trying to hide something. What? And now that you've expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that something to be. What are you playing at, Prosecutor Asogi? A courtroom is a forum for the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts, without exception. Let me guess, this was your intention from the outset, was it? The reason Inspector Gregson secretly made his way to the steamship docked in France on the day in question was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. The, the Reaper? Order! Order! What on earth are you saying, Counsel? The prosecution made an assertion in court yesterday. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine. By the Reaper's hand. But in reality, the truth is the opposite of that. What? Inspector Gregson wasn't investigating the Reaper at all. He was in fact, acting for the Reaper. So... You're saying the mission he was undertaking was... Obviously, an assassination. Barack von Zeke's never carried out any of the actual killings. Whenever the Reaper's victims lost their lives, he always had a cast iron alibi, which tells us that he must have had an accomplice. And you claim that was Inspector Gregson. What? What the hell do you think you're saying, eh? My boss would never have done nothing like that. And yet, 
when you consider all the facts, it all makes perfect sense. No, it, it can't be! We also arrived at the same conclusion, didn't we? That Inspector Gregson was operating as the Reaper. Even so, there's no way that the person giving him his orders was Lord Van Zeeks! No, the true Reaper is somebody else. Somebody else. Barack von Zeeks is not the Reaper! A predictable response from someone who's advocating for the man. And even if that's true, that Gregson was operating as an agent of the Reaper, the suggestion that he went aboard the SS Grouse on an assassination mission doesn't follow at all. Oh, you have some solid reason for doubting the assertion, do you, Council? Absolutely. It's very simple. On the day in question, nobody was killed aboard that steamship. Hmm. Professor Mikotoba and Judge Shigoku were on that very ship. If someone had been assassinated, I'm certain we would have heard about it. <laughs> What's so funny? You're right, of course. Those suspicious deaths were reported on board the ship. But I think perhaps you've missed the point. That's precisely why Inspector Gregson himself lost his life. What? Gregson did board the SS Grouse that night with the intention of dispatching his mark. But his mission ended in failure. Failure? It seems that the defense hasn't yet grasped a very important detail here. What are you talking about? What detail? Inspector Gina Lestrade. Eh? What? The victim's notebook that you read an excerpt from earlier that doesn't contain details of secret investigations at all. It describes ten years of assassination plots to be carried out by the Reaper of the Bailey. You're lying! Even if all them bludgers what got taken out had it coming! The boss weren't the Reaper! Poor Gina. There's no question that Tobias Gregson was heavily involved in the Reaper's activities. You may just be an apprentice, but if you spent any time at Scotland Yard, you must have heard rumors. I ain't heard nothing, and I don't believe a word of it. Then testify again, as a representative incentive of Scotland Yard. Consider it. Your chance to defend your boss. I... I don't... I concur. The witness will give a new formal testimony. Miss Lestrade, you will tell the court everything you know about Inspector Gregson's secret notebook. Next! The Reaper's Notebook. Yeah, this notebook does have a lot of stuff about what the Reaper got up to these past 10 years. Names of victims, dates and places and stuff, and the last entry in there was the 31st of October. It said Grouse for the place of that date, and the name of the mark. There was a note about him being a criminal what got away from the Reaper in court 10 years ago or something. But honest, the boss didn't do none of it. He was, he was just investigating the Reaper, that's all. Keep personal opinion out of your testimony, witness. We acquire only established fact here. This must be so hard for her. You can't deny it now. Surely, Ryonosuke Narihodo. What can't I deny? The notebook contained the name of the final mark and the location where the assassination would take place. That's information that the victim could only have known if he was working with the Reaper. Ah! So, who was to be this final mark? Go ahead, Inspector Lestrade. Read the name for the court. The name that's written alongside the entry that mentions the grouse on the 31st of October. Eh? Oh, um... How do you read this, then? Green's still not her strong suit. That ain't the problem, all right, oh. Hold on. It's a funny name. It ain't English. It's hard to read. So it's someone from overseas? Let me have a bash at it. Se... Is she... Is she wrote... Seshiro? Seshiro. 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 Seshiro! You mean Judge Jigoku? Is it? Yeah. Seshiro. Jigoku. Maybe? What? It, it can't be! Seshiro Jigoku? But that's... Judge Chikoku! 
Goku. Seshiro Jigoku. Certainly not an English name, you're right. But that can't be right. I know Judge Jigoku. And I saw him the day before yesterday, here in London. So I know for a fact that the man hasn't been assassinated. As I said, the Reaper failed. Oh. Gregson missed his chance to kill his mark and return the British swords. But the Reaper wouldn't tolerate the mistake. So he killed the inspector. Personally. Ah, just go. No, no. The Reaper, of course, be the accused. Barack von Zeeks. It's an undeniably logical argument. Kazuma, you planned for the trial to go this way all along, Hold didn't you? Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hallowed chalice whilst I stand accused of murder. But Lord Van Zeeks! The accused has no right to speak uninvited to court. You will return to the dock. I say nothing of whether or not I'm the Reaper. That's the task of this court to decide. But there's one thing I can say unequivocally. That girl is no detective. Eh, what? Nah, that's right, I ain't. I'm an inspector. Repeating rumors heard around the yard, reading entries from a notebook of unconfirmed origin. That's not testimony. It's practically a script. No doubt the rest of this trial will go exactly as you've clearly planned. Your hatred of me is understandable. In your mind, I'm sure I am the Reaper who sent your father to the gallows all those years ago. But you're in danger of becoming a far more sinister Reaper yourself. By attempting to have me condemned with this feeble excuse for testimony. What did you say? Mr. Naruhoto, this is our chance. My lord, the defense requests that the defendant is allowed to speak. He may be privy to important information relating to, relating to the testimony just given by the witness. Very well. I'll make an exception to grant the request. The defendant may remain in the witness stand for the cross-examination. Then allow me to toast the court's impartiality. Don't raise your glass in my direction, sir. Counsel for the defense, begin the cross-examination immediately. Woo, yeah! Slap the cheeks! At once, my lord. All right, time to press and see what we get. In other words, it shows that Gregson was basically acting as the Reaper. Not you and all. That ain't the only explanation, is it? He could have been investigating the Reaper in secret, and that notebook said what he found out. If I may. When originally people began referring to me as the Reaper, I didn't object. I believe the power to intimidate London's criminal classes into compliance with the law to be beneficial. But you carried out your own investigations into the true identity of the Reaper, didn't you? Yes, and those investigations proved conclusively that Gregson was one arm of the Reaper. One arm? What are you on about? The Reaper's victims were all extremely shrewd criminals at the top of their game. There's simply no way one person could have taken them on alone. The Reaper is an organization. With you at its head? I had spies at the yard keeping me abreast of Gregson's movement, letting me know when he was elsewhere. So I've been able to check the most recent entry in his book. I knew the location. You knew it said Grouse? Believing it to be a reference to the gentleman's club, I went there on the day in question to investigate alone. Ah, so that explains why several members of the club claimed to have seen you there. But of course, the inspector was not there. Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France, as shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Very well then, back to your testimony about the contents of this notebook. Fine. There's something wrong, Mr. Naruto. 
He seemed a little shocked by something a moment ago. Oh, no, it's... it's all right. I'm overthinking this, aren't I? Hmm... So you have complete faith that Inspector Gregson is innocent in all of this. Of course I do. I mean, I owe him that, don't I? Because he's the only one what had faith in me. Gina. He promised me he did. He promised me that even though I was just a diver, he could turn me into a top-notch detective. A cove of a good heart like that ain't gonna go and rob people of their futures, is he? Every single person killed by the Reaper was a criminal of the First Order. First Order. Low lives like that have no compunction about robbing hundreds of others of their futures. Eh? Their ludicrous acquittals in court give them the freedom to make hundreds more suffer. I... I don't... So what? You justified your actions because you were protecting innocent people's futures. I'm not suggesting that the Reaper's methods are justified at all. But life isn't black and white. That's all I'm saying. Ugh. So that's what we have to work with. It may help us that Lord Van Zeeks is in the stand, too. Yes, perhaps. I'm sure Gina knows nothing she hasn't already told us. There's no point trying to get more out of her. Did you notice how Cosmosama reacts to Lord Van Zeeks' words? When he called him an even more sinister reaper, you mean? Well, I'm sure Cosmo intends to eliminate any shred of doubt that the man is guilty. He's looking for revenge against the person he considers to be his father's killer, after all. I do worry that if we fail to find a discrepancy in this testimony somewhere, the trial may end, and the education won't go in our favor. Let's listen carefully again to what everybody is saying. Okay, so we... So this time we need to um, press on everything. We definitely need to press on everything. Names on victims, dates, places and stuff? One in particular. Well, beside the victim's names, this other name kept cropping up. What other name was that? It's the one I told you yesterday. The same name written over and over again. You mean... Asashin? Yeah, that's the one. She's a friend of yours or something, is she? Were you even listening yesterday? Asashin. The assassin. What? I... A killer, you mean? Gregson was the tactician. The one who came up with the plan of attack. He investigated the marks thoroughly, finding out when they would be vulnerable, and who to use to get at them. But the person actually executing his plans was someone else, you're saying? If that's true, then the Reaper does indeed start to sound like an organized group of vigilantes. Ah, then perhaps what it said on the passport document. Permission for the applicant and one additional person to travel. Could that additional person have been... Clearly the assassin was meant to take Seshiro Jigoku's life. Gina, can you confirm that? Against the final entry that listed Grouse as Seshiro Jigoku, what name was written? Oh, well, that's the only entry that didn't have a name next to it, as it happens. What? It, it just had like a question mark or something there, I think. In other words, Gregson himself didn't know the identity of the assassin in that case. But... Gregson was the one making the plans, was he not? Oh, how infuriating! A nameless assassin? Hold it! And you're saying that the mark listed was Seshiro Jigoku? That's what it said. Funny name, if you ask me. And I thought your name was odd. So pleased to have lost my crown there. Mr. Chigoku is the presiding judge of Japan's Supreme Court Adjudicature. I remember the man. He came to our country as a visiting student 16 years ago. Studying international law and diplomacy under your tutelage, Lord Strongheart. That bearded young fellow was a very able man, I must say. So Lord Strongheart was Judge Chigoku's mentor. If I'm not mistaken, he returned to Japan 10 years ago now. 10 years ago? After that fateful case? Precisely. In the aftermath of the Professor case, his repatriation was organized immediately. 
is a mystery why such a man would be listed in the inspector's notebook. I didn't think it was possible, but the mood in here has got even worse now. Maybe I'll just keep talking. There is a note about him being criminal what got away from the Reaper in court ten years ago or something. What do you mean a criminal? Judge Jigoku is no criminal. Well, don't ask me. I don't know nothing about it. Oh, do you remember what Father told us? That Judge Jigoku did once appear in court here in Britain. It was related to the Professor case, I'm sure. Yes, of course. You're right. Seshiro was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took the stand, took to the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and, um, actually managed to break the witness stand. He also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. It was a pitiful situation, yes. I had forgotten all about it, but I prosecuted that trial too, as it happens. You did? He was considered to be an adjunct to the professor proceedings, you see. But he was acquitted after being told to make reparation for the damage caused to the stag. And there you have it. Have what? Surely the accused hasn't forgotten his own rule. That there's no saving anyone who faces the Reaper in court, guilty or innocent alike. What? No! Are, are you suggesting that the reason Judge Shigoku was targeted for assassination? The man was sent back to Japan immediately after that trial. The Reaper had no time to do his work. But then, ten years later, the Mark returns to Britain once more. Perhaps now you start to see just how vindictive the Reaper is. Come on, that's absurd! To take someone's life for that?! Isn't the whole prom premise of the Reaper absurd? Killing those who have been found innocent? Clearly the rules by which the man operates are beyond a sane person's comprehension. But... Right, I had just about enough of this! Gina? All this nonsense about the boss planning to kill people? It's cobblers! Come on, Odo! Yes? Why ain't you saying nothing? Why? Why ain't you yelling out objection or something? What? You've got to find a flaw. You do, usually. Someone's lying here, no question. you got to work out who it is. Please, for the boss. That outburst was an insult to the core and to your own testimony. I might have known that a common pickpocket from the back slums couldn't make a detective. When this trial is over, you will forfeit your warrant card, Miss Lestrade. Is that clear? Uh, uh, I've had it with a lot of you. It lies with every bleeding place you look at this world, innit? Well, I've had enough. Gina. So have I. After that little speech of Gina's, I've made up my mind. To do what, Mr. Naruto? There was one point in this cross-examination when something that was said just didn't sit right with me. One statement that seemed odd. Oh, do, do you mean... I'm not going to let Gina's plea for help fall on deaf ears. Come on, Odo, help! You've got to find a flaw somewhere! I want to thank you, Gina. You helped me find my resolve. Eh? What do you mean? Amongst everything we've heard during this cross-examination, there's one thing that defies explanation. One inconsistency. What? An inconsistency? Really, Odo? I don't quite know what it means yet, but... Yes. There's an inconsistency in something that was said by... Jesus! By you, Kazuma Asogi. Me? Is this some attempt at filibustering, counsel? Prosecutor Asogi has given no testimony. 
What are you suggesting? I said that was inconsistent. You let something slip that you shouldn't have. When I present the relevant piece of evidence, I imagine you'll realize what you've done. Very well then, counsel, go ahead. What evidence reveals this alleged inconsistency is something Prosecutor Osogi has said? Easy! The trunk! This is a trunk that belonged to Inspector Gregson. A metal construction, is it? It's certainly very heavy. What's this? A blood stain. And a relatively fresh one, too. What? You, you mean that ain't grease from all the boss's fish and chips? Fresh blood on the inspector's trunk. That suggests that the victim was traveling with that luggage when he was killed. That can't be. There was no mention of any trunk in Scotland Yard's report. Yes, there's a reason for that. Immediately after the inspector's body was discovered, one of the street peddlers made off with the trunk. <laughs> Hoping to sell it. But I found it, me, with me nose for trouble. Hmm. Which means that nobody should have known anything about the trunk. Unless, of course, we're talking about somebody who was present when the victim was killed. And yet, during the cross-examination of the witness, just now you said this, Kazuma. Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France, as shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. How did you know that? So the question is, how did you know about the inspector's trunk? We know the man went on a trip to France. Where else would he have put his passport? Wrong answer! But you knew it was a metal trunk! Answer me honestly, Kazuma! On the 31st of October, where exactly were you? At the port of Dunkirk, on board the SS Grouse. Is that the answer you're looking for, Ryunosuke? Kazuma, what did you... I hadn't considered the possibility before, but if Kazuma was there on the ship, then it could only have been for one purpose. Oh no, Mr. Naruto, surely, surely you don't think. Come on, Ryunosuke, you know the rules. The only thing that really talks in this, in the courtroom, is hard evidence. As I understand it, Inspector Gregson always took that case with him when he traveled. So as it stands, You've proved nothing. Kazuma, are you challenging me to prove it beyond all reasonable doubt? That you were there that day in the same place as the inspector? He, he was there with Gregson? There's a clue that you've overlooked, a secret that Trunk can tell us. I can't be sure at this point. I'll need to verify it. But I have a nasty feeling that I'm going to be right. The accusation being made is deeply disturbing, but nevertheless, we must test it. The defense will identify for the court where, in the trunk, this alleged clue is to be found. Where is the evidence that ties Prosecutor Osogi to Inspector Gregson? Let's have a look inside. Oh boy. The only thing that makes sense to me is this metal shard right here. Have you seen this huge gash aside across the side of the trunk? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged, whatever made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. I wonder how it happened. Very first of October, so this passport is for the day before Gregson's body was found. He needed this document for his trip to France, and when it says permission for the applicant and one additional person to travel, I can't believe it was you, Kazuma. Do you see that? There's something stuck in the side of the trunk there. It's glinting. It looks like a fragment of metal of some sort, but it's wedged in so tightly, I can't remove it. Well, don't cut yourself. You'd better leave it, I think. Got it! 
There's a small piece of metal lodged in the wall of the trunk here, like the tip of a blade. Eh, a blade? Kazuma, slung around your waist as ever today, is the esteemed blade Karuma. Of course it is. Won't you draw it, here in this courtroom, for all to see? Exercise caution, my learned friend. That man is the son of London's most notorious killer. Bailiff! Watch Prosecutor Osogi like a hawk! That won't be necessary. Oh no. Oh no! The tip is broken. If the fragment of metal from the trunk fits together with the end of the sword, the question of who was there with Inspector Gregson will be answered. Agreed. Kazuma Asogi! Expertly done, Ryanosuke. That's a point to you, and well deserved. Do you mean to tell the court, Prosecutor Asogi? Yes, on the 31st of October, I accompanied Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk in order to carry out a mission. So the additional person authorized to travel was me. And the mission was? The assassination of the Mark. What? What? You mean, you're the killer whose name was omitted from this notebook? You were following the Reaper's orders? Dispatch Judge Shigoku? Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I have killed no one. Explain. I accepted the assassination mission, yes, and I accompanied Gregson to Dunkirk, but I never had any intention of carrying out the plan. You were never going to do it? We could believe Kazuma-sama, I'm sure. After all, Judge Shigoku arrived safely in London the following day. Hmm. On the 31st, I boarded a train from London with Inspector Gregson. We traveled to Dover, from where we crossed the channel to Dunkirk. Then we boarded the SS Grouse and made for the cabin deck, as indicated in the plan. You went to Judge Goku's cabin? <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, Jesus. Exactly. He wasn't there, though. We decided to wait, but... But you've already told us you had no intention of going through with it anyway. I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life. So I left Gregson and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in the town and returned to England the following morning. A boarding house? In Dunkirk? My signature will be in the register book. It would be simple enough to verify. Then what become of Jigoku? Gregson was no assassin, so the mark was spared. I'm sure it's easy enough to imagine after that. Gregson returned to England as well, having failed to complete the mission. He met with the Reaper in that room on Fresno Street to report the failure, causing the infuriated mastermind to pull the trigger and end his wretched agent's life. That's the real truth behind Inspector Gregson's murder. But if you did nothing as you claim, how did the tip of your sword come to be lodged in the inspector's trunk? I don't need to answer that. The victim was killed by a gunshot. A small fragment of a Japanese blade isn't relevant to the case. And accordingly, I choose to exercise my right to silence on that matter. Be that as it may, the court will sequester the sword as evidence. As you wish, my lord. We must take immediate action now, to verify whether Seshiro Jigoku remains unharmed. What? R remains unharmed? I agree. That should be our first priority. It's recently come to my attention that he hasn't been seen since yesterday. H how did you... When a foreign dignitary invited to Great Britain goes missing for 24 hours, it's only natural 
that the question of his safety should arise. You don't mean to say that you think Judge Yagoku may have been killed? The Reaper has more than one assassin at his disposal, and he has the power and influence to give orders from the inside of a prison cell. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? If I were truly the Reaper, I'd be able to tell you. Order! Order in the court! Order! We will take an emergency recess for 30 minutes. Now? Guests of the Symposium have been told to maintain regular contact with the organizer's office. If the man can't be located within half an hour, you will have to assume the worst. Oh no, not Judge Yagoku! No one would want to kill a harmless Japanese man who'd only just arrived in the country. Except, that is, for the Reaper, wanting to finish off a moth that slipped through the net ten years ago. I would have to agree. Mr. Naruto, for the defense's sake... M my lord? I sincerely hope we are successful. If you are unable to confirm Mr. Joku's healthy existence in the next 30 minutes, you will face grave difficulties. Ah! Court is adjourned for 30 minutes. Kazuma-sama, the Reaper's assassin. I feel as though I'm in a nightmare. I can hardly believe it either. Is the Reaper in these Chronicles the same as the Reaper from real life? Probably not, no. I can hardly believe it either. But on the other hand, Kazuma isn't in the habit of making up stories. I have such a terrible sense of foreboding. If something awful has happened to Judge Jigoku, then I feel as though things will only spiral further and further out of control. I felt it from the moment I stepped into the courthouse this morning. A strange sensation. They were ca careering toward, careering in towards a foregoing conclusion. Well, in the worst case, we might only have 30 minutes left. Unfortunately, though, I don't think there's anything we could do but wait now. We're out of options. Actually, there may be one last hand we could play. Or rather, one last ear. Of course! The little Mr. Sholmes doll that Iris gave us! If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. Perhaps now is the time. What should I do? Pull Har Harley's ears or not? Pull! Pull the man! Here it goes then. I'm going to do it. Good luck, Mr. Naruto. No looking back. Heave! Ow! That scream sounded like Mr. Sholmes. M Mr. Sholmes, where are you? Here, my dear fellow, here. It's it's the felt doll talking. Pull the ears again, Mr. Naruto, as hard as you can. All right, then. I'll put all my strength into it. Heave! What? <laughs> Please, my dear fellows, you don't need to pull my ear off! Mr. Sholmes, where, where are you? Myself and my trusty partner. I'm presently in the first class cabin area of the SS Grouse. The, the SS Grouse? She left Dover last night after the final pieces of cargo were loaded. We are currently docked at Dunkirk, but due to be underway again in half an hour. You've taken a ship to France! Please, even with my athletic prowess, I would struggle to jump the Straits of Dover. After we left Baker Street last night, we hurried by cab to the station and by train to the port. Nor did the board this vessel in time. So, you mean, you'd already worked it out? That the steamship was where everything really took place? Mr. Narhoto, pray, what is my name? Herlock Sholmes, world famous great detective. Recited to perfection. Well done. You're a genius, Mr. Sholmes. That's the only word for it. Ow, 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 Miss Susito, gently with this genius's ears, please. Oh my, I'm ever so sorry. If I may, Sholmes. Ah, there you are, Mikotoba. You may remember that it was in fact I who made the connection to the SS Grouse. Our Scotland Yard yesterday, when we examined that notebook and I recalled my steamship ticket. 
But of course it was, my dear fellow. And not once did I controvert that fact. I merely had our court-bound companions under my name. Yes, you did, didn't you? We just entered a recess. The trial resumes in 30 minutes from now. If we're un unable to present any new leads then, I'm afraid to say... Do not fret, please. It's for precisely that purpose that my partner and I have made this journey. I have no doubt we shall have welcome news for you within the half hour. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. That would be wonderful. Until later, then. Yes, you'll be hearing from us if you're not in touch first. Ow, 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 ow. I shan't be hearing anything if you keep talking my ear in that mindless fashion. Whatever was the idea behind making a receiver operated in that way in the first place, Sholmes? Why the deuce would I know? It's Iris's invention, not mine. Whilst I know how much you enjoy being the hero of the hour, Sholmes, we have but half that now before the grouse puts to sea again. If we don't conclude our investigations rapidly, we shall find ourselves in Naples before long. Hmm. There are times, Mikatoba, when you make a surprising amount of sense. So, let us begin! First class cabin number two. Yes, this is the one. But I don't believe in an investigation of the cabin is going to be plain sailing. That crewman standing in front of the door is an angry-looking fellow. Why are you loitering here? Who are you? My dear fellow, do you not recognize a world-famous great detective when you see one? The question really ought to be, who are you? Do you not recognize world-traveling uh, great sailor Chicken Stroganoff when you see? Great detective? Ha, huh, I don't think so. Do you see that, Mikotoba? It appears that this man is a devoted follower of mine. Goodness me, is, is that a tattoo? That says Sholmes! I must say, while such adoration is flattering naturally, it does leave me a little cold. What are you talking about? Leave! Now! How distressing. My lawyer devoting knows me only by name and not by appearance. And yet, I already know a great deal about you, sir. You have a brother, I believe. Like yourself, he's a shipman, currently traveling the world, aboard a Russian steamship, in fact. How could you know this? Elementary, my dear Mikotoba. Sure it was. Three days ago, I was bound for London aboard this ship, you see. We're looking for one of my fellow passengers, a man by the name of Jigoku. There's no one with this name on board. Well, we know that he purchased a ticket for passage. Ah, oh, you mean Eastern Man. He left ship two hours ago. Here at Dunkirk. He said something about the emergency, I think. What? Are, are you sure? So Seshiro's realized that we're after him, has he? His cabin is the one behind you. We should like to investigate, please. No! I have orders not to let even Mouse inside! Mikatoba, be a good man and draw this sailor's attention away, would you? Make up some excuse so that he leaves the area. Doesn't great detective see that even sailors have ears, both left and right? Curses! The plan is ruined! And you have only yourself to blame, I'm afraid, Sholmes. Forget it. Cabin door is locked. Even if I am not here, you cannot get inside. Nikatoba, I'm sure you haven't forgotten my special talent, have you? Opening any lock? Within a mere five seconds. So if you'd be so kind as to afford me the request of time, old friend, in your typically accommodating manner. How could I refuse such a typically unappealing request, old friend? So I need to distract that belly sailor for five seconds, do I? Good man! So, the game is afoot! Uh... Oh, I can only examine. Jeez. This must be a mousetrap, I think. Perhaps I could distract the crewmate's attention with this somehow. Um, no, no, I don't think it, no, I don't think that would work. No, I think not. That would never work, surely. I need to concoct another distraction. Oh, easy answer. The bell. 
This would appear to be an alarm bell. All hell would break loose if that thing were to ring. The whole crew would know about it. Set it off! Here goes then. Pardon me in advance. <laughs> you! What are you doing? If we were at sea, that would be very bad problem. What's going on down there? Seem is strong enough. Report at once. Sorry, sir. Nothing to report. It was just a stupid trick. No, not by me. By one favorite. No, as I told you. Now, Sholmes, now! Done. Not even five seconds, eh? Well, don't stand there gulping at my brilliance, Mikotoba. In we go! Oh, yes. November 3rd, SS Grouse, first class, cabin number two. Ooh, I have to go to the bathroom. Give me a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I have to use the bathroom. Short minute, five minute break. Ah, there we go. Good gracious. It would appear that the occupant of this cabin did indeed disbark rather hurriedly. Those clothes on the floor there, they're sexuals without question. Well, it seems we are just a little too late. Yes, by about two hours. Still, whilst we're here, we should investigate thoroughly. There may well be two hours worth of clues to find here. But that burly crewman may return at any moment, Sholmes. Indeed he may. Which makes this all the more thrilling. Well, that sticks out like a sore thumb. What is that? There's a speaking tube here. Look, though it's been stoppered with some cloth. But the voices of the crewmen on the bridge aren't an annoyance, I suppose. Or indeed, so that the voices in this cabin aren't heard elsewhere. If something has happened in here, that was for no one else's ears, do you think? Either that, or it could be to prevent snakes from entering. That's really become a favorite case of yours, hasn't it? Quite the exquisite glass, I must say. So, see here, how it... Is there something wrong, Sholmes? You suddenly trailed off. Ice, Mikotoba, ice! What opulence the first-class passengers enjoy? Chilled drinks. Pardon? Could it be that this steamship is equipped with an electrically refrigerated cold room, do you think? Well, it is a luxury liner, after all. They have enormous refrigerators for storing all sorts of lavish pr produce as well as ice. On our voyage to Japan, we enjoyed culinary delights from all over the world. Hmm, suddenly, Mikotoba? The sight of you is making my mouth water. I haven't taken on the flavor of the food I ate, you know. Alright, what's in the waste basket? This is the waste paper basket, look. And there's still rubbish inside. Indeed, and let us pry. I've discovered recently I have a penchant for exploring the contents of others' waste paper baskets. I sincerely hope only for your work. Here we have a notice issued to passengers from three days ago. Three days ago? The night before we arrived in London. When I was still aboard myself. 
evacuation drill notice, 31st of October. Following the I was reading that! Ah, yes, there was an evacuation drill. I remember now. For our safety and security, all first-class passengers were constantly under the watchful eye of the crew. So it was a welcome release to have some privacy for once. The evacuation drill itinerary has been entered into the court record. Let me read that. I want to read this. And this... These are the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Beds are also strictly forbidden. Additionally, there are set severe punishments for stowing away in wardrobes and or travel cases. I feel the rules have increased since I last read them. Probably just my imagination. What about the fact that they're not straight on the wall? Doesn't that strike you? Hmm, you may be right. Probably just your imagination, though. A trifle. You know what I always say, Mikotoba. There is nothing important about trifles. Probably just my imagination, but I think that might be slightly off. The wall is a slightly different color just here. Do you see? Indeed. What you have observed arises when a frame that has been hanging for some time is removed. Perhaps your friend is an art thief. Now there's a bold deduction worthy of a great detective, I'm sure. He may very well be the elusive thief who has been plaguing Francis' gallery so late. I think perhaps we should focus our attention elsewhere, Sholmes, don't you? That outline on the wall. I feel as though I might have spotted something of a similar shape and size elsewhere. That's a very sizable trunk indeed. Seshiro is partial to all things large. And a rather clumsy fellow, if he failed to notice he'd left that behind. Perhaps he left it on purpose. It's lighter than you might think, but still a hindrance to a speedy escape. One moment now, Shining. We're still we're checking everything. Hmm, pity it's locked, so we can't look inside. Surely five seconds from now, the situation will be quite different, though. Sadly not. It has a seven-digit combination lock. And I'm not in a morose enough mood to work through all the combinations at present. Yo! You are still here! Ah, Abel Seaman Stroganoff. Hello again. I was beginning to think you never materialize. Eh? You? You are waiting for me? Of course. I was expecting you to burst in with the hearty Russian profanity far sooner. I was in trouble with Captain because of the trick you played before. Poor innocent chicken. It is all your fault. Ship is leaving port soon. Get off, now! Of course, we shall disembark presently, my dear fellow. But first, there is something that must be done. What are you talking about? Why, naturally, the debunking of your deceit and the bearing of the truth. Kakoi! I'm afraid I see through your lies. For one thing, Mr. Joku Jigoku has not yet left this vessel at all. Ah! And for another, my dear Seaman Stroganoff, you know exactly where the man is, even as we speak, don't you? How? How can you... Good gracious, Sholmes, you mean you've worked it out? All of it? Oh, impressive. It's really been too long, hasn't it, old friend? Ten years, no less. So, would you care to join me for a uh, dance of my in inimitable logic and reasoning? Nothing would please me more. What? What is this? Ha ha! We have but minutes until the vessel puts to sea. No games now. Oh! Time is of the essence! Mr. Stroganoff, allow me to remind you of your earlier claim. He told us that Jigoku left the ship some two hours ago. Duh, that is what I said. Sadly, that was a rather clumsy lie. You see, there is something in this room that quite clearly contradicts it. What? Ah, yes, of course. I see you've noted it too, Mikoto. Then please, do take the lead. 
What in this cabin shows the impossibility of Jigoku having disembarked two hours ago? Easy! That's an easy answer! It's the ice! Why would there be a full glass of ice still there? It would have been melted if he'd left two hours ago! Let's see what the last three years have done to your observational skills, then, Mikotoba. It's been ten years since we last did this, Sholmes. Not three. Why, of course it has. Quite. Now, all the clues are here in this cabin for your eyes to see. But as I always say, you must not merely look, but observe. Observe, and the answers become clear. So, impress me. I think I can manage that. That's an easy one. It's Take this! this! He's tap dancing! What? Perhaps you should have cleared away that glass. How curious that the ice shouldn't have melted despite it being abandoned two hours ago. Oh! It appears that the man was here in this very cabin until moments before our arrival. With this well-chilled glass in hand. Get your mind off the refreshments, Sholmes. One might even conclude that somebody informed him of our boarding. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Stroganov? Uh, but, why would Sheshiro run from us? Before we consider that question, allow me to confirm one small matter. Would I be correct in saying that these first-class cabins of the SS Grouse are the same ones in which you and Mr. Jigoku were accommodated on your voyage from Japan? Ah, uh, that's... that's right, they are. I was in the cabin next door, and Sheshiro was... yes. 50 days in this very cabin during our voyage. As I suspected, or you see. There are traces in this cabin of a dark secret that Mr. Jokoku had to hide. What traces? I, I know nothing about this. Ah, this is news to you, is it, Mr. Mr. Stroganov? Sholmes, what exactly are you getting at? As I said, there are traces in this cabin of some nefarious activity. Something that appears out of place which I'm quite sure won't have escaped your notice. Something out of place in here. That's the key to this, Miss Mikotoba. The remnants of that dark deed that took place in here are being masked by something quite incongruous. Congress. I must say, I didn't foresee ever doing this dance of deduction with you again, Mikotoba. No, quite. But life is full of unexpected twists and turns, as we well know. Now then, let's see if I can't uncover the truth here. Yes, you have the floor, my dear fellow. Take that! Ha-ha! <laughs> it's the rules of passage in this frame here. They're obviously out of place. The way they're hanging crooked on the wall, as if they were put there in a hurry. Yes, as I'm sure you've already concluded. That frame was originally over here. The shape and size are a perfect match. Bob, you're right. With did frame move? Hardly the most observant of crewmen, are you, Mr. Stroganov? I would think having his reservations about your reliability. <laughs> oh dear, that really seemed to touch a nerve. So, Mikasova, why don't you lift that frame off the wall? Hello, bullet hole! That, that looks like a bullet hole! What? Who has been shooting walls? See, the projectile has been removed. Clearly, the careful occupant of this room has already disposed of it. Now then, Mr. Stroganov. Ah! I have the distinct impression that you're attempting to shield said occupant. I don't know what you are talking about. Why would I try to protect Eastern Stranger? Ah, so we're talking about the same man, I see. Good. Ugh. I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this in no time, aren't you? But there's some very noteworthy evidence that explains the reason why you're lying for the man. Yes, you've been told to keep on you know, this pretense, as clearly shown by... I really don't know how to approach this one, Sholmes. Ah, my dear Mikotoba, simply keep first principles in mind. Study a subject from every angle, and I'm quite sure that you'll see it. In fact, I'd put a wager on it. I'm to glare at the fellows from all sides, or I could certainly do that. Hello, banknotes! That. 
is almost too obvious for words. Quite the universal language of the world. Money. Ah! And I'd wager that the Eastern fellow in question is Seshiro Jigoku. Yes? Ah! So I presume you realize what this means. There are clear signs that a crime has been committed in this cabin. And the way you're going, sir, you'll find yourself accused of being an accomplice. But, but... I believe you know, Mr. Stroganoff. You know where Mr. Joe Goku is hiding at this precise moment in time! The CHEST! As always, Mikotoba, in matters of deduction, the furtive glance as your unfaltering ally. Yes, I think you're onto something there, Sholmes. You found the chink in this burly fellow's armor. You need only follow the man's gaze to know where our prey is hiding. The slightest flicker of the pupils, a minutely delayed blink. Give me a minute, I, act to, I actually have to make a phone call. Before, and before it's too late.
Sorry about that. Anyways, continuing. Nothing escapes my attention, even that which is barely perceptible. You could hardly call this barely perceptible, Sholmes. A man's turned his entire head. It's not exactly what you descri describe as a furtive glance, is it? It's almost too obvious. We shall let you your tapping toes aside, my dear fellow. Take that! You turned immediately to look at this large trunk, didn't you? Ah, the truth is, Seishiro Jigoku, Jigoku was unable to escape from the ship in time, and is at this very moment, doing his best to stifle his breath inside this trunk. If he still has a breath to take, I fear he may be running dangerously low on air. Hmm? I imagine he didn't count on us making a nuisance of ourselves for quite so long. I think it would be in everyone's best interest for us to open the trunk as quickly as possible. But, but how can we? Are you forgetting about the combination lock? We don't know the seven digit code. The combination lock can't be opened from inside the trunks. Therefore, there must have been an arrangement for somebody to open it after our departure. Of course. In short, before Jigoku hid himself inside that trunk, he must have told somebody the seven-digit number for that lock. As I'm sure you could confirm, Mr. Stroganoff. No, I know nothing about combination gold. Don't move a muscle, my good seaman. Huh? Now, Nikotoba, would you do the honors and open the trunk? How on earth do you expect me? It's a seven-digit number, remember? Quickly now, we have little time! Ah... Uh. Five... Wait! It's Sholmes! It's Sholmes! Wait a minute! So five... Two... Three... One, zero, four, five. It shows backwards. Yeah, see? It shows. Look at it from upside down. It says five, two, three, one, zero, four, five. So, literally, the answer is Jones! That did it! It's open! You had to meddle, didn't you? Well, Eugene, you found me now. Seshiro. I was really hoping beyond hope not to find you here, you know. But you're not entirely unsurprised, I take it. No, quite. I just wish it were some other way. Well, are you ever going to introduce me? Ah, your reputation procedure, Mr. Sholmes. I've read stories of many of your exploits. Excuse my manner, Sholmes. This is Mr. Jigoku, my old friend and traveling companion. The devil is in the details, Mikotoba. I believe you meant to say your old friend and traveling companion, who made the cowardly decision to flee the country without a word to anyone when things turned sour. I see my reputation precedes me as well. What an honor. Well, Seshiro, are you going to explain all this? You know it all by now, I imagine. What you didn't know, of course, is that three days ago, on the night before our arrival in Britain, an attempt was made on my life here on this very ship. By the Reaper of the Bailey. Yes, I've since heard. Because you were once prosecuted by the Reaper, weren't you? Ten years ago now, mind you. And I had no idea at the time what the dangerous individual he was. Anyway, when we arrived in London to find the symposium was postponed until goodness knows when. It became all too apparent to me that I might very well be targeted again. So you decided to flee the capital without saying a word to me about it. 
I'm afraid so, yes. Of course, I realize now that I really ought to have confided in you. It's somewhat surprising, I must say. What is? Well, first-class cabins aboard luxury steamships are in very short supply. It's more than a little hard to believe that this one just happened to be available. So says the protagonist of some colorful short stories, but I don't care for your opinion. The cabin did just happen to be available, so I purchased a ticket, and here I am. I've just seen for myself the obvious remnants of that incident in this cabin, so you'd already purchased your return ticket before we even docked at Dover, had you? To prevent anyone else taking this cabin and seeing the evidence, is that it? Yuji, I have nothing to say to you. Well, in a mere five minutes, the ship will set off on its onward voyage and not make port again until Italy. I'm afraid we must insist that you disembark with us at once. You have no jurisdiction over my movements. We have this, Seshiro. Take it. What is it? It's a subpoena from the old Bailey. You're a man of the law. You know what the ramifications of ignoring a document like this from the British courts would be. You came prepared then, Yuji. Come on, let's go. One moment. What is it, Sholmes? Inside Mr. Jigoku's trunk. I found this rather fascinating trinket. What is that? Seshiro, I can't help you, I'm afraid. Some smoke component from something. But what? I have no idea. By the look on his face, I think he genuinely doesn't know. Well, let us pocket it as a small souvenir of our... Our brief sojourn in France. Well, young Naruhodo, I think we've done as much as we can, I'm afraid. The rest will be on the shoulders of you and your assistant. Third of November, 12, 10 p.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. Kazuma Asogi, I know you, and I know you wouldn't lie, but still... There's no doubt that you're holding something back. You know more than you're saying. During the past 30 minutes while this court was adjourned, all possible efforts were expended. But sadly, Mr. Jigoku's whereabouts could not be ascertained. We must accept the unfortunate conclusion that the Reaper has already done the deed. There's no sense in wasting any more of the court's time. The prosecution calls for an immediate verdict. No, the trial cannot end now. You're a Japanese man, Ryunosuke. You should know when to lay down your sword. And you should know never to presume when the battle is won. The court has already been presented with all the evidence and hard I heard all re relevant testimony. Invent TV and Skype to show video proof. Oh, God. And there can only be one conclusion. That the accused is guilty. All relevant testimony. Far from it. There's still a crucial witness. From whom the court is yet to hear a single word of testimony. In that case, call your witness to the stand at once, counsel. Yes, my lord. Tomorrow, if possible. The witness is already on his way. and scheduled to arrive tomorrow. Who on earth is this crucial witness? Seshiro Jigoku. The very man allegedly murdered, murdered by the Reaper. J Judge Jigoku! You found him! But the investigations of every police and resource at the capital suggest that Jigoku is already dead. How in the name of God did you find the man? He was located in France during the recess at the port of Dunkirk. Thanks to one of Mr. Herlock Sholmes' famous deductions. Herlock Sholmes. Inspector Gregson almost certainly met with Mr. Jigoku on the night of his death. 
because along with Pro Prosecutor Sogi, Gregson was on a mission to assassinate the man. Which means that Seshiro Jigoku is the sole witness who can clarify exactly what happened aboard the SS Grouse on the 31st of October. Well, it would appear that it's too soon to move to education at this point. The prosecution concurs. The court must hear Mr. Jigoku's testimony. No judgment should be passed until all testimony has been considered. In that case, I hereby call the end of today's proceedings. Court will reconvene at the same hour tomorrow. No objections from either side? No, my lord! No objections, my lord. We live to fight another day by the skin of our teeth. Alright, with that, I am officially going to end the live stream for today, so tomorrow we shall definitely pick this back up. It will be a little bit late, because tomorrow I am anticipating more, game, um, more gameplay previews of Sonic Frontiers, which I am so hoping that um, what we see next actually clears um, some of the distrust that the community has. Even though I don't consider myself a member of the community, I do feel like every, everyone that has seen the gameplay of Sonic Frontiers thus far is overreacting. Severely overreacting, mind you. And personally, I think the game is in good hands. I think the game is in good hands. But that's just my opinion. In any case, that is all the time I have for today. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the live stream, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out Mother Roy's video page. Page by clicking the link in the description below to help achieve a dream and be my Gaga video week for sure too. You won't be disappointed. And of course, forget to click that little bell button if you wish to be notified whenever I upload a video or a live stream to my channel. And most importantly, if you see less, wish to see a less space done, you can do so checking out my playlist section. All my videos are there archived for your viewing entertainment. So you can watch less plays like God of War, Final Fantasy 15, Final Fantasy 14, and Walker, and many, many more. Thank you all for watching. As always, hosting my shadow, saying Long Z. And I'll see you for the next adventure. Goodbye, everyone!